Welcome to Worship Leader Hangout, where we talk about many aspects of leading worship and leading a worship team. I'm Chad, and today I'm hanging out with fitness expert and youth pastor, Cecil Foster. Cecil, man, thanks so much for being on, being on the Hangout. Thank you, man. Love to be here. Yeah. Well, today we're going to answer the question, uh, is it important for worship leaders and ministers in general to stay physically fit? Tell us a little bit about a little bit about yourself. Well, I am a I'm a personal trainer by trade. Okay. I've been a personal trainer now for roughly 10, 10 and a half years. Uh, I've been I've worked had the privilege to work under uh, uh, Mr. USA, Mr. Universe, and Mr. America, and uh, and under John DeFinis, who's in three different halls of fame. So I've been blessed to do that. I'm also a, a youth pastor, so God's called me to youth ministry. So I get to kind of dabble in both those realms. Absolutely. So basis. when you said you worked under them, um, like what kind of stuff did you do? Um, I trained under them, uh, was taught under them, uh, was beat up by them in the gym. <laughs> so learned a lot in that sense too as well. Uh, so yeah, it's been, it's been awesome. It's yeah. a good journey. What brought you to be a youth pastor? Um, I, I was called at a very young age. Uh, I didn't really realize it, I, I guess. Uh, it took me... Probably when I was 18 or 19, I knew that's what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be involved in. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, it took me uh, almost 10 years later to really actually step out into that and to do that. So uh, during that time is when I had the time to work in, in fitness and be a trainer and do that. I'm still doing that now. Uh, and then God kind of brought me back full circle. Yeah. yeah so. What led you to take that on in your own life, in your own personal life? Believe it or not, uh, insecurity in girls. So <laughs> that's what got me into the gym. I uh, had a young lady who broke up with me because in high school I was a whopping 140 pounds at uh, six feet tall. And so uh, when I got into college uh, or going into college, I just decided that that's not, I just wanted to, I don't know, it's a chance for you to start over and to be a whole new person. You know, I'm not around all the people from high school. And so I just, I was a commuter, and I had a lot of time in between classes, and I just got into the gym, started picking up magazines, started reading magazines. Um, I would always try to find the guy or, or the person in the gym who, um, not to leave women out, but I was always <laughs> want to try to find the guy in the gym, typically who, um, if he had, like, great biceps, I want to talk to him, hey, man, how'd you get your biceps? He had a great chest. How'd you get your chest? Uh, you know, how'd you get your legs? How'd you, I wanted to know, like, what. Yeah, definitely you know, what they had done. It's kind of like best practices. Exactly. Business, you know. I want to, yeah, I want to meet the person who is, exemplifies what I wanted to look look like. And so a lot of that for me was just getting um, to help myself, my own uh, my own personal issues of just being insecure and, and always being the small guy. And, and that was, so, yeah, I guess I had small guy syndrome uh, and mm-hmm. wanted to get that. And then it that transformed into something else. So then it turned into... Uh, realizing that you really are kind of like kind of like an artist in a way that you have you know, your body is your canvas and you have an opportunity to you can mold it and shape it and build it however you want and so in my mind I had what I wanted to look like exemplify what I want to look like mm-hmm. I have not reached that yet I'm still working towards that right. but it's that is it's my process my discipline that's, that's really good yeah I, I'm kind of that same way um, when it comes to cycling so you know you, you're kind of that way with with like your physique and, and that, that building. Um, but with what I do with cycling, you know, I want to get, I want to achieve certain goals mm-hmm. in that, you know, and it's more probably toward the, the cardio world, you know, endurance yeah. kind of sport. Um, but, uh, but, I, but I know what you mean, you know, it's, yeah, and I found that actually in college as well. Yeah. So, um, that is a good chance, I think, to kind of like it's relieve stress because everybody knows college carries lots of stress. Yeah. And so relieve stress and to kind of, I don't know, um, just, yeah, just go beat yourself up and just feel better afterwards. Whatever issues are going on in your life, you can do that, whatever it is, whether it be the cycling, whether it be the weightlifting, whatever, you pour all yourself out into that and then you're just like, it's there, it's gone, mm-hmm. you're good, you can relax. Yeah. Yeah, it's a way to get rid of stress. So let's, let's go ahead and, and get, dive right into that question okay. we asked at the beginning of the video. Is it important for worship leaders and ministers uh, to stay physically fit. Yes, <laughs> I, I obviously no. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I believe, um, and I guess, a personal opinion, and also, I, I mean, when we look at scripture, 
a lot of people want to pull out 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 at the very end that where it talks about, do you not know that your body is a temple, temple of the yeah. Holy Spirit? And we know that, not to like be messing up that entire chapter, that was talking more about sexual sin. It was talking about giving your body over to a prostitute and doing mm-hmm. that. But I, I think that the, the premise is still uh, the same in a sense that just as that was abuse on your body, and doing that, the Corinthians also were known for they had a saying of um, kind of like an eat, drink, and be merry saying, in that they would you know hey eat whatever you want today and party and live the life and just don't care you know. Um, and Paul is very specific about saying hey no you don't you can't do that you don't need to do that. Um, and he is addressing the sexual sin, but also the gluttony of that, mm-hmm. uh, the gluttony of that lifestyle and that. Um, I think you know in that sense. Scripturally, we can kind of use that to support that in that we are God's creation. We are flesh, we're spirit, we're soul. And we're all, we're kind of like, you know, we're intertwined. All that's intertwined and mixed together um, in a mystical way that can't fully be explained. And that, you know, if we're God's creation, we're his, his chief creation. Um, he made us in his image. Why would we want to neglect that in that, in that physical sense of that? Uh, not that that is more important than in spiritual in the soul, but um, but you know there's so much more you can do. And, you know, if I'm um, I find it hard, I guess, when I have uh, someone who's a believer come to me and that they're extremely overweight and they have diabetes due to their weight issue, and they have high blood pressure, they have high cholesterol, or they have a heart condition because of their weight. And then they want to pray for God to heal them of this diabetes, or let's just say they have cancer. Cancer comes on because of health things that they've done, and they've set themselves up for this. And then yet they want God to heal them, and they didn't take care of themselves. So, and not you know, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, you know, you weren't disciplined there. You didn't really uh, do what you need to do. God gave you the resources and the knowledge and the ability, and. Um, I think just an overall, and since, you know, keeping from laziness too as well, is that, you know, the more physically fit you are, you usually tend to be less lazy. I can definitely be lazy, I know, but you tend to, you know, you create endorphins and you tend to have a more positive outlook. Um, I know if I'm working out on a regular basis, I don't, I don't, I don't have problems with like depression or things like that as, as much. I feel better. I feel like I can go conquer a day after a workout. Um, in, in that and I have a, a clear mindset so I think it's we're, we're to call to be stewards of everything from our finances so I think our physical body as well mm-hmm. yeah absolutely and so yeah and, and you said talking about working I mean you you are a personal trainer mm-hmm. every day every day you're kind yeah. of bivocational with uh, physical training and also uh, being a youth pastor here, yeah so. yeah and, and and what you're saying a, a little bit earlier um, about you know self-inflicted things like that diabetes and that overweight i mean it's a it's a very touchy subject yeah but uh but but it's so true i mean it hits home i'm I'm sure to a lot of people you know they they made the the decision yeah to eat that way or to to live that way um then brings on other things and and really maybe what we should think about or what they should think about is you know Maybe our prayer should be, give me the wisdom to be able to learn how to take care of my body. Yes. And in uh, and, and that, and that way, rather than just heal it or yeah. just, get, you know, God, get rid of the diabetes for me. You know, because we can pray, hey, God, send somebody or something to, to help me conquer this physically. Yeah. Because because I've seen that you know you see that on documentaries and oh yeah everywhere where people lose massive massive amounts of weight and they come close to you know they're going off blood pressure medication and you know diabetes medication and just pushing that stuff away because their their doctors are saying they can at that yeah. point and it, it's it's pretty neat I think I think it's you know and again if if someone is born with a diabetic issue or um, they've been heavy their entire life. Um, again, I was on the opposite end of the spectrum of that. I was not that. I was, I was the there, exact opposite. But, there, yeah. and I know there are some genetic, and some people, you know, yeah, there are do exceptions. Know, there are course, exceptions yeah. to the rule of that. But I think that you know we have to look at. It's just an overall discipline. Just as we, feel how important we feel it is to, uh, or we should as a Christian, uh, to pursue Christ and to develop that relationship and have not just religion with Him, but a relationship. And we chase that. We pursue that. 
uh, how do we do that? We read our we read the word. Uh, we study the word, not just read it. We study it. Uh, we hopefully spend time in prayer. Uh, we try to we're always trying to spiritually improve ourselves. Like if I have a really if I'm a naturally very negative person, I'm wanting to hopefully as a Christian, the Holy Spirit works on me to want to be a more positive person, or I want to be. Um, or if I have a language issue, I just, you know, not to cuss in the sin or, you know, but if I just can't seem to not, you know, keep my mouth clean, you know, we're always trying to sanctify ourselves. So I think that physical fitness in a way is, can be a form of like sanctification in that, and I'm careful when I, how I say that, um, in that um, it's a discipline that you're, you're doing uh, to subdue your, subdue your body and to bring it under subjection just like you would your spirit or, or, um, other issues, the flesh that's going on inside your, the flesh that you that we are living in, but um, yeah, it's something. It, it's hard for me to, and, and it's something. It's hard for me to, I guess, you know. And I've said this, and I just I don't want this in a negative way, but you know, when you have a, if you have a pastor or even a worship leader who, who may address a sin issue uh, from the stage, and yet they have the issue of gluttony. Obviously, if they're two hundred pounds overweight. Um, that's that's tough to deal with, um, just because yeah, that's obviously something they need to work on their life. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I'm not saying everybody's got to walk around looking like an Adonis, you know, and they're all Greek gods walking around. That's not the case. But I think we do have we have a call, and we do have uh, this is our body God's given us. We can definitely do more if we're more physically fit. Yeah. Uh, you can you know. You can go out and you you know you want to talk from witnessing to missionary work to you know whatever and here you know in the kingdom you can do so much more than if your the quality of your life is so messed up due to you know things you could have prevented self prevention in that mm-hmm. sense um, so yeah it's something that you know in general I think it's that important for that and again like you were saying about you see people who are able they can reverse diabetes they can. Yeah. Uh, get off this medication. Get off. The, they don't have to be reliant to that. So it comes down to really who's your who's your master. Yeah. And are you a slave to those things? Or are you a slave to to Christ? Or right. is He the Lord of your life in that sense? All right. So uh, our video just cut off uh, due to space, and that's my fault. But I want to get right back to where we were talking about. And you said um, that uh, being physically fit um, is almost a form of uh, sanctification in a way. So yeah kind of continue that thought and we'll, we'll move right along yeah it's just like uh just like how we if we want to you know if we're wanting to um, improve our relationship with christ there's certain things that we you know we may cut out of our kind of our life say you know for me personally i love angry uh angry music especially when i wait when i train i just i i like angry music there's a lot of uh, artists so we should out do there. some of that stuff on Sunday morning. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like Slipknot. No, uh, yeah. but um, you know, there's certain bands that I would definitely listen to because it channeled that anger and that aggression in me, um, and that's what I wanted kind of going into the weight room. Uh, but you know, it was something in my life that God had to deal with me with because I I could see that my attitude definitely it was affecting other areas of my life. Mm-hmm. So. It helped me in the sense of me attacking the weight, so I just had to find another alternative to that. So I would search out. It's hard to find, but kind of angrier Christian music, like Demon Hunter, or Slayer, or things like that. Just things I just need. I just, I like that. So you know, just to kind of change that because it was affecting other areas of my life, and so because I want to make sure that anything that I can, I want my relationship with Christ to be as um, as tight as I can make it. You know, I I want it just like as with my wife. You know. She's my best friend. I can talk to her about anything, mm-hmm. uh, and I want to have that kind of that openness with Christ. And even and though He sees all, you know, I'm I'm naked to Him in a sense of He sees everything. He sees my faults and sees all that. But I, to myself, have to want to do that. And I think with when we look at our physical fitness, it's the same thing. Yeah. Um, and and I think more than just physical fitness. Let me clarify our health. I say health. Um, that you know we should be careful what we eat. And we should watch what's going on our going in our body. Um, if we know that if if I know that my family is predisposed to cancer, uh, I probably shouldn't be getting in a tanning bed, or I probably shouldn't be eating certain foods I know are have or laced with carcinogens. You know, um, so I'm going to I need to find out what's going on. I want to I want to be be able to be my best in what I do in serving the kingdom, 
and not, you know, not saying God couldn't use me laid up in a hospital bed or something like that. Um, he can, but, you know, I want to be a good steward of what he's given me yeah, and do that. Now, and that's what I think is, is the biggest thing is the, uh, is it, that we're going to be a good steward with that. Um, but I will say, you know what, it can become an obsession, you know, uh, being too physically fit. It totally can. It happens. People do it. Um, yeah. It's true. That can become a god. It, yeah. can, it can enslave you just like food can. Yeah. Uh, I guess in the 10 years of training people, I've seen food is, um, it's not just, you know, the Bible always talks about the New Testament church broke bread all the time. It told, you know, to hang out and break bread. They ate at every little event they had. They always were eating something. Um, but I think we have to, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, we can't let that enslave us and become, become a god to us. And food definitely is it's an emotional thing for a lot of people. Most people definitely. I work with, food, they're, what they've done, their lifestyle, has put them in the position they are in. And that's why they have the diabetes or they have the high blood pressure, the cholesterol, the heart disease, or, you know, they have the 100 or 200 pounds to lose. Um, and they've put them, you know, their food and their lifestyle put them there, whether it was due to ignorance because of not knowing the wisdom of what they should and should not do, or whether it was due to filling that void when something bad happened, they grabbed a piece of cake, mm -hmm. you know, that emotional thing. Um, so I think it is something that our physical fitness, our body definitely, it runs deep and, and, and that, uh, um, you know, it's something that we have to steward. It's something that yeah, we should take control of. Uh, just like we do our thought process, or we should our thought process, or our heart. And what's the intention of my heart, man? What's the what are the thoughts that are coming to my head? You know, am I, am I taking every thought captive? You mm -hmm. know, am I letting you know my tongue? Am I letting uh, slanderous speech come out? Am I murdering people with my tongue? Uh, Christ addressed all that, and you know, obviously Christ, uh, I would say, was the most physically fit person in the world. Uh, but um, you know, it's something that we have to, I think. It's all. It's part of our being, you know, our soul, our flesh, and our spirit. All that is just we're all wrapped up in one, yeah. uh, and we need to have that balance, that control, in all all those areas. So, if you're talking to maybe uh, the, uh, the worship leaders or the people mm -hmm. that are watching this, um, maybe there's somebody that is struggling with uh, a weight issue, or um, maybe just they want to be more physically fit, whether yeah. they're you know, skinny or, or overweight right now. What are some practical steps that they could do to uh, to achieve that? To achieve that, uh, the best thing I tell is always uh, doing something's better than doing nothing. Um, so uh, you know, I obviously love the weight room. Uh, you love cycling. If I got on a bike, it would kill me. You know, it's just not my thing. I admit that. You know, um, so you got to find that thing that you're going to enjoy. You're going to love. Um, you know, I know I know pastors who love MMA and do that. I like my face and my ribs, therefore I don't do that. So, uh, but I mean, what you got to find your thing. So, doing something, I say, number one, do something is better than doing something is better than doing nothing. Uh, number two, and it's like to me, it's like a perfect marriage. Is not only do you need to have the work outside or uh, the you know the um, engaging you know some type of physical exercise is food. I'm a huge advocate of that is that, man, you are what you eat. And so you really need to start, man, or start reading labels. Start becoming privy of what you're putting in your body. Just think about it that way. You know, we say that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's, we wouldn't want certain words. We don't want certain words coming in our, in our mind and our thought process. We don't want to see certain images that can pollute our mind or pollute our heart. Uh, why? Then we do want to take something in that can pollute our body in that sense. So... Uh, next thing is attack the food issue. Look at that. See if food is enslaving you. Is that is that something you're running to? So when you have a bad day, or can you not wait to get that milkshake, or are you going to get down on your knees and pray about it mm -hmm. um, in that sense? So That's those two good. things are the, the two big ones is that I would say, you know, stay active and then start looking at food okay. um, and follow that. That's good. Thank you so much. And, well. and I do want to end with one point. Um, What's really cool about the process of physical fitness, whether it be lifting or cycling or whatever it might be that you do or want to do, is uh, that it also gives us an opportunity opportunity to be in the world, to to be a light yeah. in the world for Christ. Um, I, I do cycle with a lot of guys that aren't Christians, um, as well as some that are, and it, it gives me a chance to witness. And, yeah. and you can be uh, a light in that in that situation, in that 
that field, whatever it oh, may yeah. be, uh, whatever sport or avenue of fitness that you are in. So, uh, so think about it that way. Um, as a ministry opportunity um, with, yeah. with your oh, physical yeah. fitness. So, um, Cecil, thank you so much for being thank on the you, show, man. man. It is an honor to hang out with you and talk about this. And uh, remember to, um, to subscribe and if you want to be updated on upcoming content. And um, if you have any other questions for Cecil, um, just leave them in the comments below. And uh, we'll see you next time on the next Hangout. And remember, great worship leaders are always learning. We'll see you later, guys. Thanks, dude. Oh, you're, awesome. you're awesome, man. Show them, show them the guns real quick. Uh, <laughs>